Hello and welcome to Lesson 2, Internet Marketing and Plain English for Over 50 Entrepreneurs. Hi, this is Richard Grijalva, best-selling author of The Boomerpreneur Revolution, How Baby Boomers Are Turning Their Knowledge into Profits. And I'm also the founder of the Over 50 Entrepreneurs Internet Marketing Video Tutorial Program. And in this series of trainings, I'm going over and explaining the difference of before the internet and talking about what that means in after the internet. In other words, there is a language that was created for those internet technical professionals and they created this language which is really based on information and content that you and I already know. But like with any language, if you understand it, great. But if you don't, it's tough to communicate. So in the series of trainings, I'm simply explaining and using some metaphors and some things you know in the before the uh, internet, which by the way, many of these things are still in play. I'm not saying not to use them. I'm just using this to explain how this translates to after the internet. Now, in the last training, the first lesson, we talked about the moment of truth. And this is the time when your customer has decided that the problem has gotten bad enough that they're going to take action to solve their problem by seeking out someone who can give them a result. And before the internet, we would use the yellow pages and we would find someone who could potentially help us. After the internet, of course, we go online and we search. Now, we're using criteria. Criteria are words and phrases that are important to us, which translate into keywords. Keywords are very important because these are the words people go online to search for, and you want to use that in your marketing material, both online and offline, because the goal in the yellow pages was placement. I wanted my company to be listing number one in that subcategory. On the internet, of course, it's search engine optimization with the same goal. I want to be on the first page of a Google search. I want to have that first listing. In the yellow pages, it was called page ads. And in Google, as an example, it's called AdWords. Now, essentially, it's the same concept. But AdWords is using your keywords in order to target for potential customers to click on that box and go to your website. So now we're going to go into step two in the buying process. Now, after the moment of truth and they're going to solve their problem, they're really sitting in this middle here of the problem and result. Now, what the prospective customer or customer is going to do is what's traditionally been known as the sales funnel that salespeople use. But it's actually being used in this, uh, the 21st century, by consumers and potential customers or customers. And here's what they're doing. They're essentially going through and they're looking for suspects, potential uh, offices or businesses or individuals or companies that can provide a result to their problem. And then they're going to take those suspects and eventually get it to a prospect and say, these are the few or the one that I want to deal with. And then they're going to contact them and then there's going to be a number of actions and hopefully they will become a customer. But it begins with them. They have a problem and they're looking for a result. Now they're going online and they're going to go through and identify suspects and they're going to get to prospects and then they're going to decide who they're going to do business with. So let's take a look at what they're doing. In the, uh, the idea here is in before the internet, and of course this applies now, is that what we're after is to get them to come through the door, that physical door into our store or into our office to be able to have a conversation with them to find out what the problem is, get them result, and of course, offer our, our product or our services. Now, <clears throat> in the, excuse me, in the internet world, the online word, what we're actually doing is we want them to come to our virtual store. Now that I, I, I use the metaphor here that it's a virtual door and think about it that way. This virtual door is an inside view into your business and they're going to make a decision based on what they see and based on what they can get. If you are answering their criteria of what their problem is and what they're looking for a result. 
This is part of their qualification process that they're going through, moving from the suspect to the prospect and qualifying. Now, if you're familiar with the, the sales side of things, you're looking at saying, really, is that what a consumer does? Absolutely, that's what they're doing. In fact, I have other programs where I talk about how to reframe your mind to be thinking about it that way. So they're well-educated. They know what they're after. So now they come to your virtual front door and it's what they see and what they do next that's going to be vital to you. And I want to use an example here. And the example I'm going to be using is the newspaper. Now I know you're probably thinking to yourself, why am I using the newspaper? Because I want you to think of the newspaper as how websites are designed. Now if you look at this, this is the USA Today, of course, and it's sitting where we would be going through a, the corner of some main street and we would see it and we would make a decision to buy it. Now, I want you to look at it. I want you to imagine that as you look at that newspaper inside that box is that all you can see, it's what's called above the fold. In other words, you can't see below that fold unless you buy the newspaper. Now, if it's at a newspaper stand, you certainly could pick it up and you could turn it over and look at the bottom half of it. But in essence, all you have in your buying decision is looking at the information above the fold. Now, take a look at this website. It's got a lot of similarities because what you're looking at is basically the same thing. What they talk about in terms of designing a website, they use the same word, above the fold meaning what you can see when you have your browser, what it is that you can see in your website, because you would have to scroll to see the bottom of it. In a newspaper, you'd have to turn it over in order to be able to see it. Same idea. So what you're giving your potential customer, and as they go through their process of deciding whether or not you're a good prospect for them, is looking at what they see and they make decisions immediately, whether they're going to click and continue on and look at things. So I want to talk about what you would see in the newspaper before the internet. Now I'm giving you three examples here and the reason why I'm using this is that I want you to pay attention to the name of these three newspapers. It's niched. When you look at USA Today, it's obviously going to have information and many people call it McNews because it's just bite-sized pieces of news and it goes across the United States. In fact, there's a section inside the paper that has a paragraph starting with, you know, Alabama, Alaska and going through all the states and saying what's the latest information that's going on in that state. Now, there's also sections in there. So they have a navigation bar that's underneath that banner. So you see the banner, there's a navigation bar, which is going to tell you section A is this, section B is that, section C is, you know, whatever. It's a sports, it's entertainment, it's business, it's classified. So they're giving you the sections. Now, in the middle is the New York Times. I live in Birmingham, Alabama. So if I buy the, buy the New York Times... Obviously, it's going to be about information about New York. And of course, it talks about global events, but it's talking about things that are important to people who live in New York. And then in the far right is the Wall Street Journal. Now, the Wall Street Journal, as we all know, is a business newspaper. And I want you to notice something else here. They have a banner that goes across the top. They have a, a subheading and they have a, the, the subheading is their is their tagline. Then there's a navigation bar. The navigation bar says section A is this, section B is this, section C is that. Uh, USA Today is very visual and it's using visuals to tell their picture. Now in each of these boxes, it's, it's telling them what they can find in section sports or entertainment or a bonus section in, in the case of Speed Weekend. And it has a, a visual there of a, of a car and a race car driver. So you can see it's very visual the way it's constructed. New York Times has a banner and it's got these columns, these on both sides. It's got some pictures on there with the headlines. Wall Street Journal, you see that it's got like sidebars, columns, and it's got two visuals and it's got a, a headline. Again, all of these newspapers are basically designed with the same kind of design elements. And that's what I want you to think about when you're talking about your virtual front door or your website. 
Now let's take a look at the basic components of a newspaper. So in a newspaper you have again what I was talking about. You have a basic template on the right side, hand side of how to construct a newspaper. Now if you're doing a newsletter there's templates for newsletters and they've got basically the same thing. You got to have a banner, you got to have a name of it, you got to have some content, you got to have a headline, you have some visuals, you have a picture, you have your your content in your column. On a newspaper, it's going to, at the end of that column, it's going to say continued on page so-and-so and section so-and-so so that you can follow up and read the rest of it. When we go to a website page and we take a look at it, is that we have many of the same things. Look at the, on the right-hand side, there's a company logo like USA Today, New York Times, the Wall Street Journal. There's going to be a navigation bar, which is up in the right-hand side. In this case, it has a video and it has uh, an opt-in box, which is a way to collect leads by offering some valuable content that they can get and they can sign up. They can subscribe, just like you would a newspaper. You can subscribe. Then below that are three columns, just an example, much like a newspaper. It has the columns uh, for each one. And then when you click for more information, instead of telling you to go to a page, uh, in a newspaper here, when you click it, it's going to automatically take you to another page where the continuation of that article, the continuation of that information is where you're going to find it. Now, it's important to note here that in the newspaper, uh, you'll notice the graphic. Uh, you'll have a nice graphic or you have a nice photo. In a website, it's important to use video. Video is... Uh, can be translated 60,000 times faster than content, than the written word. That's why videos are so popular. They're very popular in the marketing because you can convey your message and people will remember and retain what that message is. So it's, I highly recommend that you're going to use video as you build your website. I also want you to notice how clean the design is on the right-hand side. It doesn't have to have what's called sliders. So those those bars that come across with these pictures that keep going in there. Nobody really stops at it unless it's a furniture store or something like that. So when you're designing something, make it simple. It doesn't have to have a lot of bells and whistle, uh, whistles and dancing cows and all the rest of that stuff. A lot of flash. People don't like it. Make it simple, just like the newspaper. Think about it, newspaper. Now, the other thing to note is that when we look at a newspaper or we're looking at a website, our eyes go in a certain way. It's like a backward S or a Z. We start from the top left, we go to the right, we come down, and then we go to the bottom. So you want the important information on that banner. You'll notice on the banner of the newspaper, it tells you the price. How much is the newspaper? Here is you want to give them the important information, the call to action. What do you want them to do? So the website design is clean, it's simple, and they're very, very effective. But you, you really want to be able to use video. So think about your design of, a, of your website, much like the design of a newspaper. Now, on, on uh, talking about the above the fold and below the fold, this is a template for the whole page for a newspaper. So you can see another example that here's the header, and then there's a subtitle, there's a place for two visual, uh, uh, visuals on the top, which would be above the fold, then below the fold, you, you see another visual, and then some more content. On a website, you'll notice many of the same things. Uh, from above the fold is when you're gonna have your headline, your navigation, your video, some other uh, pictures perhaps, or photos, uh, some columns, and then below that is some more information that, uh, if they scroll down there, this is important information, but it's going to send them somewhere else in the website. The mistake some people do is they try to take all the content and put it in the front page, in the home page. Big mistake. It's not. It's like a newspaper saying, you know what, we're not going to have sections of newspaper. We're going to try to throw all of it on the front page. It doesn't work. What you want to do is work on the headline. You want to work on the video. And of course, you want to have some great content there that's going to be attractive to your market niche using their keywords, their demographics, the things that are important to them to be able to bring them into your website. Now, if we go back and we take a look at this, you'll notice that's what's happening or what's happening now after the internet 
is that unfortunately a lot of the print media in local towns where I live here in Birmingham, we used to have three newspapers. We have one, and now they only produce their paper uh, three days a week because it's becoming harder and harder to compete against digital. People are now getting their news online. They're getting it on their tablets, their smartphones, and their laptops. Now, the, the reason I'm telling you this is because it's important to understand the impact of internet marketing and the ability to go online and use this. This is something you cannot ignore. It's not a nice to have. It is a must have if you're going to succeed in business today. If you're not using it, you're going to be in an incredible disadvantage. So having said all that, let's do a quick recap here. So we want to understand that before and after the internet, it's the same thing. It's a niche. We want to have a targeted, like USA Today, Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, the uh, you know Birmingham Journal, whatever it may be. You want a niche so that immediately when you look at that, you know who it's who you who it is who it's for, and that's who you're going to attract. Now you need the banner, and you have to have a compelling headline. If the headline is not compelling, people are not going to stop. Now. The purpose of the headline is to get you to read the first line, and the purpose of the first line is to get you to read the second line. But if the headline isn't strong enough and doesn't have my problem in there or, or the result that I'm after, I'm going to keep moving. Remember, folks are trying to figure out where they find someone who can solve my problem and get the result I'm after. They have a navigation bar to make it easy. Now, the first thing on a navigation bar, you don't need it to have about us. They really don't care about us. What they're after is, how do you solve my problem? I recommend to my clients, about us should be the last thing on there. Some people put the latest news, press. That's the last thing people are going to be looking at. What they're after is, do you have what I'm looking for in order to solve my problem? Because remember, they're going through their suspects and coming up with a prospect that eventually they're going to do business with. Now, images, very important to have images there, but today it's absolutely critical that you use video, that you're using video marketing in your website. So we're going to talk about that more in, in um, later lessons. And of course, the content must be really, really good, really, really strong. So your action steps from here is go design your site and use WordPress. WordPress is, is free and it is easy to use. Uh, then you want to create your video, develop your content, and then you want to launch your website. So let's take a look at what we've done so far. First comes the moment of truth. This is the buying process for your customer. When they decide to take action to solve a problem, what do they do? They're all going to do the same thing. They go online to search using their keywords. Now, once they've come in, uh, to uh, Google, as an example, and the first listings are there and they read them then they're going to click on that link and go to your website that's the virtual door so we're up to the moment of truth in the virtual door now you can take and do all the steps that i've outlined on your own or i have a program that i've developed for you in the first uh, module was talking about how to get your keywords in module two is how to build and launch your wordpress website and I'm, I will show you how to do that with 13 lessons, and it's using the latest version, 4.0 of WordPress. So you'll be able to build and launch your website, but you also get the ability, because I add a component there about how to do blogging. So you'll get everything that you need here. So if that's something that interests you, then there's a link below that you can click, and you can go there and check out uh, what that's like and, and see the other kind of modules are there. But tomorrow, we're going to be talking about the next lesson. So I will see you in the next video. And by the way, please uh, leave a comment uh, because I go back and I look at these things and I'm interested. Are these things that I'm teaching you of interest? Is it helpful? Are you getting it? Does it make sense? So if you got questions, leave a comment. I read them. I'll look at them and I'll answer as many as I can. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.